recording our services and putting them on YouTube and Facebook, um, the church pages, and last week it fell down, so the majority of the service was at the ceiling. I tried to fix it, so we'll see what happens today. If people get to see the service or just hear it. Uh, we stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. Let us kneel in the darkness. Let us wait with hope filled hearts. As rising and grows within us and shows us light. Let him speak to us and teach us to love. Until we open our hearts to be his own. And our praise hymn this morning is Angels from the Realm of Glory. That's number 22 in your hymnals. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, seeding in each of us and all of creation the love of Jesus Christ. And it is through Jesus that we are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
second hymn this morning is number 66, We Three Kings.
Now, last week we talked about Jesus and his family escaping. Remember, we, we jumped over? Well, we're going backwards now. So we jumped over last week, and last week we talked about Jesus and his family leaving Bethlehem for safety because King Herod wanted to kill him, remember? So today we went backwards, and before that happened, the three kings came, or the three wise men, or the three sages, or those are different names we have for them, right? And do you guys know this song? Do you remember singing this song? Or is it one that's not very familiar to you? Wait, We Three Kings, the one we just sang? Is it fairly familiar, or is it not that familiar to you? Yeah, because we really only sing it about one time a year, and at least in church, on Epiphany Sunday, which is what today is. Today is Epiphany Sunday, and that means, Epiphany means showing forth or a great light. And Jesus was the great light. And so these three kings came to visit, and they brought him frankincense. Do you know what that is? oil that smells really strong. Yeah. And then they brought him gold, which you know what gold is. And myrrh. Myrrh is perfume. That's right. So about this time that they show up, they, they're guessing that Jesus is probably around two years old. Is that what you would bring a two-year-old when he went to visit? Yeah. No. What kind of stuff would you take a two-year-old to visit? I would bring baby sharks. Baby sharks. <laughs> because of That's his favorite. You think Jesus would like that if he was with a two-year-old right now? Probably, yeah. I don't think he. I don't think he'd have much use for gold or frankincense or myrrh. But as soon as they leave, so those things are really expensive gifts, right? They're really pricey presents. But it, so as soon as they leave, what happens? We talked about last week. Joseph and Mary and Jesus have to what? Escape. They have to escape. So there's some scholars who think that they were brought these expensive gifts so that they could pay their way to Egypt. Because Joseph was just a poor carpenter. He didn't make a lot of money. That's pretty interesting. That's a God, that's what God's plan was, you think? <laughs> it's something to think about anyway. So we're going to be talking today about that, about the story. I'm going to read the story of, of the three kings out loud out of the Bible this morning. And we're going to talk about how Jesus is a great light. And do you know what we're called to be? God's children. God's children. We're called to be the light too. Just like Jesus is the light of the world, we're called to be the light of the world, just like Jesus. And to shine forth and to show other people what it means to live in God's love. Alright? Can we do an echo prayer? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving us. Help us to be the light in the world. To shine forth. Your love. Your love. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. There's still chocolate. <laughs> There's perks. <laughs> Before we dive into our scriptures, let us have a moment of prayer. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to start in Isaiah, actually, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of your Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and a thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you, to the riches to you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will come over your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense.
incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. And from Matthew, the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called to get together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with their gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So like I told the girls, today in many churches we're celebrating Epiphany. It is the first Sunday after Christmas. And... We often hear this passage from Matthew's Gospel, the story of the wise men from the East searching out and finding the Christ child. The word epiphany simply means showing or shining forth. And it's the divine light that shines in the Christ child. This light is not a foreign light to the earth. Rather, it is the light at the heart of all of all, it is the light at the heart of all life. Look around at the people next to you. Look at the life growing on the earth at the radiance of the sun or the whiteness of the moon. Look also into your own heart. There in all things is the light. Maybe it is deeply hidden under confusion or doubt, but it is there waiting to come forth anew. It is in the Christ child that this light shines. He is our epiphany, our showing of, Christ, of God's love. The Epiphany story invites us to open our eyes to the light that is everywhere. So this story is about light. It's about the light at the heart of everything. But it is also a story about following stars, about paying attention to dreams. And it is a story about enormous risk. In an article on building faith, the Celtic way, Author Phyllis Stroop spoke of hearing J. Philip Newell speak at Ghost Ranch in New Mexico. He was speaking on uh, the Celtic approach to spiritual formation using two books, the Big Book and the Wee Book. Celtic tradition stresses that both of these books are books of God. The Big Book refers to the universe, to the creatures, to everything that has spoke, been spoken into being. In the beginning was the Word, says the Gospel of John. All things have, to come to, have come to being through the Word. Or, as it's been said, the beginning in the beginning was the sound, and the sound was with God, and the sound was God. See, essentially, everything is a sounding of God. The universe is like a sacred vibration, a living text that we can learn to read. And that includes the movements of the stars, the flowing of the seasons, the dreams of the night. And I love this. As I've told you before, I was not raised in a church. And yet always, always throughout my childhood and adulthood, I felt connected to God. Looking back, I realized that though my maternal grandmother had a lot to do with this, she read to me out of the Bible and prayed with me, so did my dad and his brother. When Uncle Keith passed, he didn't 
want a full-length sermon during his funeral. He didn't want a traditional church funeral. He wanted his funeral to be a chance for his friends and family to mourn his passing and to celebrate his graduation into heaven. But at the time, I was knee-deep in my pastoral studies. And we are taught that God must be made the center of everything. Obviously, this is a good teaching. That includes funerals. And so for my uncle's funeral to lack scripture reading, meditations, and church music, he had instead a friend play songs that meant a lot to him all throughout his lifetime, it made for an unconventional funeral and one that I kind of had to grapple with a little bit. But Uncle Keith had also chosen very specifically the individuals he wanted to speak at his funeral. And most made it through without too many tears. And those five testimonies did more to speak to Uncle Keith's faith and his Christian love than any sermon that any pastor could have delivered. And my father is just as unconventional. Love of nature connected my dad to his brother. Hunting, fishing, you name it. As long as it was outside, they were doing it. And once, several years ago, the girls were visiting for the summer and telling my dad about the different churches they went to. This was in the high time of my pulpit fill, so there were several different churches they were attending. And they told him about the elevator church and the castle church and the different names they have for the churches we visited. And then they asked him, where do you go to church, Papa? And his answer was, outside. And when they told me about that, it made me take pause. Because I realized in that moment that my dad had been teaching me about God with every walk, with every backbreaking session of weeding the garden, with every sunrise and every sunset that he drug me out away from my books to watch, with his love and respect for animals. When I was 13, remember 13? All the confusion, the feelings, the thoughts, the ideas, not knowing who you are. In the midst of all of that, my dad and stepmom told us we were moving to Phoenix, Arizona, of all places. And for me, you know, you're growing up in a small town with a group of kids I've been with since preschool. You know how that goes? And you're going to school in that small town, but actually living outside of another small town, outside of Portis, which was even smaller. And in the country outside of that, the idea of moving to Phoenix, Arizona, of all places, was just overwhelming. And I was scared. And I remember going out back to where we had this old broken down picnic table. And I remember laying on it and watching the clouds go by, thinking about all these things going through my brain. And I remember suddenly feeling a wash with peace. And I'm not sure I knew it then, but I know it now. It was God reassuring me that all would be well using the big book. And it was my dad and my uncle who taught me how to read it. The big book is important. But there's also this little book. It's physically little anyway. We know that the vastness of the Bible can't be really put into a size. But this little book, this book of scripture, in which we listen for God speaking to us through those who've gone before us, our mothers and fathers in faith, their experiences of God, their mistakes, their failings, and man does the Bible hold nothing back when it comes to those. All of our great heroes of the faith, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, David, Solomon, Peter, Paul, they all made grave mistakes. Some of which our current morality would tell us are completely unforgivable. And yet, and yet, God uses them 
in all their imperfections, just as God uses us. We also witness their hopes and their dreams, and their wisdom is given to us so that we too can learn the way in which God speaks in the human heart and in human history. So through this little book, we can learn patience and love and faith and hope and endurance in the faith. And we are invited by God to listen to these two books. And it's important that we listen to both of them. Because if we only stick to this little book of scripture and we ignore the big book of creation, we might miss the vastness of God in all things. The way that God works in and through all things. And if we only listen to the big book and we ignore our little book, we may very well miss that personal and tangible voice of God. The challenge to us is to listen in both books, not just individually, but as a community, faithfully wrestling together to know the sound of God more deeply. And in listening to both books, we find God's plan for us. We follow the star that God has sent out to guide us, and we see the dreams God has instilled in us. Not that following God is without risk even when we are faithfully following our books. The story I read about the wise men, it is a story about risk. That light, that star that the wise men followed completely <coughs> disrupted their lives. It's guessed that Jesus was around two years old. And so if the star appeared to these men when he was first born, that meant they took two years to travel. And it would take two years to travel home. That means four years of their lives, away from their families, away from their studies, that they gave up to follow this star and see where it might lead to. They put their lives at risk. The gifts they were carrying for this child, this, this king that was born, were not cheap. So there was enormous risk to their personal safety. And even once they got there safely to the king child, they found out that the king of the land wanted them dead. They were at great risk from the king of the land as well because they defied him. We don't know what happened to the wise men once they made it home. We don't know if the wise men even made it home. But there's one thing we can probably guess. They would never have regretted taking that risk. They would never have regretted following that light, following their dreams, following the star. They would never have regretted crossing the boundaries of their homeland and following that great light. See, it doesn't matter what we call it. It doesn't matter how we explain it. The sound, the light, the book. The bottom line is God is always reaching out to us, calling us near, calling us to take risks and trust the plan. And today, we have a very unique opportunity where we are literally starting the first day of the year in the church with God, able to listen. So we start 2023, and we have another year, another year to listen, to follow, to trust. We have another year to love and to serve and to live. We have another year where we get to be the light shining in the darkness. Will you stand as you're able and join me in the reading of the statement of faith? We believe in God, the creator and giver of life, who brought all creation to birth, who mothers us, fathers us, protecting, nurturing, and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God born among us as a fragile baby, embodying both love and the need for love, and calling us to rest in God as trustingly as a tiny child. We believe in the Holy Spirit, breathed into us at our birth, always drawing us on. 
pain, nourishing our growth, and inspiring our living. We believe in the reconciliation of the world to God through Christ, humbled at birth and humiliated at death. Christ entered our fearful darkness so that mankind could enter his glorious light and share in the life of his resurrection. And we believe that each new child is a glimpse of the face of God, sign of the life to come, and a call to live in peace and celebrate the living together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Take, eat. This is my body given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. in our hearts, O God, with the radiance of Christ's presence, that our lives may show forth his love in this weary world. 
Teach us to befriend the lost, to serve the poor, to reconcile our enemies, and to love our neighbors. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. time of our service where we share with one another any joys or concerns. So are there any joys to lift up this uh, this Sunday? Yes, ma'am. Um, on Friday, I got to go horseback riding and I got, I got to steer the horse all by myself. You got to go horseback riding all by yourself. <laughs> that is a joy. I always love doing that as a little girl, too. And your cat's pregnant again. Oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a joy or concern. We'll put it in the middle there. It's a joy for the little ones. Maybe not for mom and dad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what did you say, animals? <laughs> All right. Anything, any other joys this morning? Yes, sir. About a month and a half ago, I switched up my medication for my ankylosing spondylitis, and so far it has been extremely effective. Yay. Yes, we're very excited about that. The new meds seem to be working very well. Try, try to refrain from baby kisses. It's hard. We, our nephew has, is not in the hospital, our, but our great nephew is <coughs> homesick with influenza. He's just three months old, so it's scary. Anyone else have any other joys? How about concerns? Do we have any concerns you want to lift up this morning? Then let us go into a time of prayer. God of the stars, the heavens and the planets, you sent a star to guide the Magi on their journey to the Christ child. <clears throat> Send your star to guide us on our journeys of faith. God of creation, you spoke creation into being. You sent your son as the light, of, as the light into a world of darkness. God, speak to us today and every day. Just as Jesus is our light, may we be lights as well. God, too often our world is a hotbed of fighting, of pollution, of starvation, of homelessness and war. Teach us to be stewards. Bring forth peace amid battles. Lead us on paths to care for those society has tossed aside. We lift up to you those who are hurting, whether mentally or physically or spiritually. So many of them left unsaid, but we know they dwell in our hearts, and even more those that aren't spoken aloud and need your prayers anyway, need your peace and your healing. We ask that you bless them, you give them comfort. But Lord, we also joyfully give you thanks for our many, many blessings, because as dark as this world can be, you constantly give us moments of light, rays of sunshine, we give you thanks for a new year, for chances to spread your love, for family and friends, for a place to worship you together, where we can come together freely and without fear. We give you thanks for healing, especially for Matthew. We give you thanks for the modern medicines that we have available to us that help, help everyone heal and work better. 
We give you thanks for animals, for the joy and the laughter they give us, even when they're not ours, sometimes especially when they're not ours. We lift all these things to you, in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And to end our service and to go into our new year, we're going to have a good old-fashioned hymn of Softly and Tenderly, number 301. In your brown hand.
of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 538, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing, uh, verse 1.